G'day everyone, Pete Techman Coleman here, and beside me as always is my good friend and confidant. 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 We just keep mixing it up, don't we? Yeah, every time. Mark the Bearded Tech is here. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Pete. And we're at ISC 2020 in Amsterdam. Amsterdam. And we have a very Last special. What, sorry? Last one. The last one in Amsterdam, yeah, before we go to Barcelona next year, 2021. And but we've got a very special guest today. We do, we do. The, this the, guy the, has got brains coming out of his wazoo. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, right. <laughs> And I, I'm sitting next to him. Hopefully, so it so will rub off. Paul Harris, thank you for joining us. <laughs> CEO, CTO I'll, of Aurora. Yeah, like a combo. It makes me sound more important, or I don't know what it makes me sound as. But I like the word the in front of it. The. The, the Paul Harris. Yeah. It's just <laughs> That's right. I, mean, I like that. You too. sound like a thing now. Yeah, the it sounds Paul like, like yeah, I'm, yeah. Only, I'm going to talk third person from now on. All right. Paul Harris doesn't do that. Right. You know? <laughs> Everything will be third person this entire interview. Yeah. The, the Paul, Paul Harris, Harris thinks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. Good Why idea. All right. kind of funny. <laughs> so look, we're having a chat about AV over IP. We want to just sort of unpack some stuff and, and get your perspective uh, sure. on maybe where it's going and, and whatnot. One thing I want to get clear at the start, uh, doing my little bit of homework on uh, Paul Harris. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and it was, uh, I see this term IP based T. Yes. And I've gone, what the hell is IP based T? Is this, is this something on its own that's special? Can you enlighten us on this? Okay. So years ago, when I was looking at the market as a whole of what was going on, one of the things that I didn't like was everybody was doing their own thing and they still are for the yeah, most yeah. part. Uh, so one of the things about Aurora is we always try to go outside the box. We try to do things by standards as best as we can and try to unify the industry. So uh, we're not a big fan of proprietary if we can avoid it. So ip T conceptually was to synergize standards together or create the illusion of synergy under a common theme. The look of the product, the commands you use, whether it's a one gig or 10 gig, they could be different uh, technologies, but they actually have the same protocols, the same methodologies. So this way the integrator or the user doesn't have to change the experience because it's a different technology. It's the same experience, but the underlying could be the more complicated part that stays hidden. Right now, the biggest problem with AV over IP is, yeah, you have all these standards fighting for each other. You got SDVOE, which is the 10 gig standard. It's great, but it's the 10 gig standard. There's still no standard for one gig. There's no standard for 10, 100. And, uh, I'm sorry. No, no, I was just gonna say, I think just, just to, I suppose, clarify, when we talk about standards, we're talking about like pseudo industry standards, not Correct. not ratified standards. So it's, it's kind of like Dante and some uh, like HDAC yes. have have become an industry standard, but not a ratified standard. Correct. Yeah. I mean, really, what is a standard other than a popularity contest? Yeah. If you really think about yeah. it. Yeah. So look at Apple. They're not really a standard, but yeah. they are a popularity contest. Right. Yeah. People, they got an entire ecosystem, yeah. but at the end of the day, you can't look at their code, you can't do anything yeah. with it. it. It is proprietary. Yeah. Android, more open, non -pro less proprietary. Yeah. Yes, Google owns it, but at the end of the day, it's an open platform and yeah. anybody can use it. The problem in this industry right now is a lot of the AV technologies, like look at the Dante video. Well, that's still a proprietary, Correct. you know, pseudo thing. Yeah. SD viewing technically is proprietary, but yeah. they're trying to become a standard. But for me, a true standard for AV over IP will be one that encompasses it from the 10100 mm. to 10 gig and beyond yeah. and deals with the HDCP mechanisms the same way, creates an interoperability and has one mechanism that can control the gamut across the board mm. as well as the delivery of the other things such as the Ethernet, the 232 and the USBs and the other things that normally people have come to expect to write across it. H.264, yes, it's a standard, but it doesn't address the HDCP, it doesn't address how to deal with USB and 232. So for our industry, it's not a standard. Yeah. It's, it's a compression standard, yeah. but it's not a transport standard. And that's really what's missing from this industry is a unified transport uh, mechanism and standard across the entire board, regardless of whether it's this person's chipset, this person's chipset, this person's product, this person's product, and so on. Will we get there? If I have my way, we will, <laughs> but uh, I, I, you know, as much as I'd like to get my ways, uh, we can't always do that. Um, so, um, you know, that's one of those things. Yeah. But um, what, what about AVB though? AVB is a, a ratified standard. So why why hasn't why haven't we seen the adoption of AVB in the industry other than from say one manufacturer? No one else has really 
is tightening it up. Yeah, there's one manufacturer has, and they're doing a great job at it, mm. but the problem with it is, uh, and sometimes you get great standards, but they go nowhere. I mean, look yeah. at, a, uh, I know you're from Australia, but we had ATSC in the United States, yeah. uh, and you got DVB overseas and so on. Mm. But why don't those do well? Well, at least for the United States, they didn't do well because cable TV. They didn't, they didn't take off. So here you have a standard, but yet it got overridden by a proprietary thing locally because of the practicality of it. So you look at AVB and you're talking practicality is what you're talking. When it first came out, it had a lot of limitations and restrictions upon it. It required a very special switch in order to use it. And those switches were very expensive. And they, what they did was they gave the ability to open up for other companies to figure out ways where you don't need that special switch. And they came up with clever ways. I mean, look at SDVOE. SDVOE doesn't need an AVB switch to operate, but yet it is timing accurate on the money. No AVB switch required, but yet we've done installs of over a thousand units. They're all synchronizing, they're all working great, nothing's blowing up. So why do I need AVB for? So I think AVB is a great idea, but until somebody steps up and actually does more than just the AVB. Does AVB address USB? No, it doesn't. Does it address the 232? Does it address the IR? Does it address the one, the one gig ethernet tunneling over it? It doesn't address any of that. So if you look at what the true standard is, look at HD Base T, for example. I'm gonna throw them in, even though right now they don't have anything to do with AV over IP. They're working on it, yeah. and eventually you'll see it. And they're gonna be another person yeah. coming out to another angle. But are they gonna to be too late to the, to the table? I don't think there's anything that's such too late. Okay. If you got, either you got the right solution or you don't. Yeah. And if one company is not addressing it, the industry will shift in another direction. Yeah. I mean, look at, look at SDVOE. Right now it's becoming popular because they're solving a problem that no one else has. If somebody does the same thing as them well, and what more. HD Base T did back in the day, right? They, they actually had a solution yeah. that no one else had and it solved a problem, right? A absolutely. And it became popular. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And so what you look at right now is, and I'm going to be going somewhere with this, so I'm not actually just talking about HD Base T for the hell of it. Yeah. I'm going to show you another way of doing things, which no one's thought about, but I'm doing in this company, and I'm going to prove that it's going to work. Okay. I'm going to hybrid technologies. So I call it hybridization of technologies, yep. where you mix something like an HD base T with an AV over IP. Yes. So why do you do something like that? I'm glad you asked, by the way. Point to point communication, like point to point <laughs> transportation rather than sending it back to a network switch, like you're saying, like staying within the room, for example? Part of it. Okay. So let's look at it. Let's do a breakdown. Let's say you have five devices in a room, right? So normally you need five IP addresses. Now you got 10 rooms that yes. you want to link together. Yep. That's 50 IP addresses. It needs a 50 port switch. Yep. So obviously they're usually like 24, 48. And so you're going to the next size. Yep. Yeah, you add group. You're, you're, unless you get a big switch, you're, you're going to uplink. You get the idea. You need IP addresses and switches. Mm -hmm. Take a hybrid example. What if in the room, all that was HD based T, but in the main HD based T unit that's switching and doing all the stuff, you had an SDVOE yep. in there or a yeah. one gig or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Now you link that up into a switch with only 10 ports. Yes. Now you only have 10 IP addresses to yeah. worry about. The rooms are all plug and play point to point. Yeah. Uh, keeps it very simple for the integrator. Yeah. You're only worrying about 10 IP addresses and now you, your whole solution's yeah. done. Yeah. Still doing the same thing, but now with an easier level of simplicity and the cost goes down because yeah. HDBC inherently is less money yeah. from their technology. Well, even if you think about a, a teaching space, a lecture mm -hmm. theater, somewhere like that, where you have a lectern, you have equipment within the lectern, and quite often you're doing local switching. So the same thing, right? So you yes. want to turn around and you want to just do some local switching. Why am I pushing everything out onto the network just exactly. to come back to my confidence monitor on, on the screen. Like, exactly. what, what, it doesn't make a lot of sense at all. So it's an application. I always yeah. call it applications versus expectations. You're going to love this music in the background. Yeah. You play it every yeah. so often. So, <laughs> so you're going to get a little bit of Queen entertainment in the background if you can hear it. So uh, I'll give Bang & Olsen a plug on that one. But their stuff is rocking today. So it actually is pretty good audio coming from them. It is. But yeah. we're going to know uh, this song more than well than we already know it yeah, already. Yeah. already. <laughs> so we've been hearing it all day. So there we go. So, <laughs> obviously, they watched Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, and they've yeah. been really uh, jamming it up over yeah. there. So, no, but what uh, what happens is exactly that. If you look at this application where you got conference rooms, why do you need five 10 gig links going yeah. up to a switch? Yeah. 
you're not going to ever have all five going at the same time. Right. It's not going to happen. Yeah. What you really need is maybe one going in and yeah. one going yeah, out. That's right. Yeah. Now with the new SDVOA chipset, we could do both full bi-direction. Yeah. So with one cable, you can get your full link into the room off of one port. Yes. So your cost per port is going to go down. Then you bridge it out with HD base T. Now one of the cool things about the third gen HD base T is the fact that they're doing uncompressed 4K 6444. So they've yeah. pushed the Cat 6A cable to do 100 meters is what they've uh, is what they've done. So they're actually um, uh, delivering full perfect quality with zero compression within the room itself. So with how, no how are they doing? I mean, you've got a, a Cat 6A cable, which is uh, the minimum standard is 10 gig, right? So how are they getting up to 18 gig? over that one cable. So what the way they're doing it Without is they, they do a proprietary modulation. It's, right. it's, a, it's an HD base C modulation. HD base C is not the same modulation techniques as regular IP, mm -hmm. which is how they tunneled and did a lot of the stuff. Yeah. And the way they control their bandwidth is usually in a single direction. Yeah. So they've been able to achieve getting 16 uh, gigabits of data in a single direction. Yeah. Uh, and that's how they're pulling it off. And right. I think they're actually getting two gigs back in the other direction, right. as a matter of fact. Um, but the point is, they've actually created a tunnel. Yep. But if you think about it, you don't need to send, even though people hear, oh, 18 gigabits uh, per second for uh, uh, the 4K 6444, yep. the HDMI you know, 2.0 sure. implementation, the 18 gigs is the cable bandwidth. Yes. It's not, when you start stripping it out, when you're sending it over something, when you take away all the extra nonsense, yep. it's really a lot less. Like yep. for view, it's about 13 gigs. Yep. Yep. So it's really not as much bandwidth as people think it is. Mm -hmm. So when they got, they created a tunnel of 16 gigs, which is more than enough to carry it uncompressed. Yeah. And that's okay. what they're doing. So that creates a zero latency. Yes. And it creates a perfect image, mm -hmm. no compression techniques whatsoever, which is what 10 gig means. Yeah. Now granted, they're doing a lossless compression. Mm -hmm. 100 microseconds is nothing. That's yeah. a few lines. Yeah. And the image quality, you put a test generator through it, it's gonna look perfect. Yes. Yeah. But at the end of the day, no compression is no compression, and no yeah. latency is truly no latency. Yeah. Yeah. So they do have a little bit of an advantage in that respect. Yeah. So from an ecosystem, and the way you're doing it, if you implement it in the room, you've simplified, created a plug and play within the room. Yeah. You only got to worry about 10 IP addresses to go between the rooms and link them up together. Yeah. And you created a hybrid solution that gives you the yeah. optimal image quality at the best price. Yeah. Totally agree with that. Yeah, totally good. agree with that. So you're you're the uh, the king of world first, right? Love it. Yeah. Is that, you gotta do the world's that, first. Is, is this the world's first? This is where I look at the camera and go like this, <laughs> and then you gotta put that little shiny. <laughs> yeah. So so make sure when we edit this, we do the. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. And so one of the things that we do in Aurora is we go out of our way to um, make it different. To, to, to look at the industry and say, what are we going to do and change the typology of AV? And that's one of our taglines, by yeah. the way. Okay. Tagline. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's changing the typology yeah. of AV. So how do we do it? Well, something as simple as a transceiver concept. We started that. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're seeing chip vendors taking advantage of what we did over five years ago yes. when no one was even doing this. Yeah. But people look at it, well, why a transceiver? Why? Well, because you got one skill. Yeah. You want to service something? Take an encoder, make it a decoder, yeah. and see if that's the problem. Yeah. Wall plates. Yeah. I could put a wall plate in the front of the room, one plate in the back of the room, tell that to be an encoder, tell that one to be a decoder, yeah. and now you're using it as an extender. Or I'm using just one to a decoder by the monitor, and I got dual monitors. There's Bang & Olufsen again, <laughs> shameless plug. But yeah, they've been playing this all day too. Yeah, yeah, been, so, yeah. Yeah. I think I've heard it three times since I've been there. Yeah, they, <laughs> they obviously like uh, this movie a yeah, lot yeah. too. Yeah. So. It was a good song, you gotta give the song credit. So. No, I, I love the idea um, of a true transceiver, right? So when you can actually transmit and receive simultaneous content, I mean, yep. to me it just makes sense. That's how networks operate, right? We don't go, we don't have a, we don't have two devices on our desk for anything that's you know, IP based, right? It's one device and it's, it's uh, bi-directional. So it, it's amazed me that it's taken this long for the industry to, or someone to create a true bi-directional AV over IP solution. Yeah, well the, sh the shame of it for us is, you know, it, sometimes they say, oh, it's flattering when competitors copy your stuff, but at the point, they're copying your stuff and it gets yeah. a little bit annoying because yeah. come up with your own ideas, you yeah. know? Yeah. 
uh, reversible USB, you know, the yeah. ability to change the directions of yeah, USB. Yeah, yeah. Sounds simple, but until we did it, no one yeah. was doing it. Um, you know, so there's a lot of things that we've done over the years, even in the tradition, a lot of people don't realize it. Uh, so you know we see a vertical video wall? Yeah. We started that. We, we had the original patent submitted and all that yeah. stuff. And, uh, but multi-image rotation, so all these jigsaw puzzle walls and vertical video walls, all that real-time image rotation, yeah, we started that over 17 years ago. Yeah. So we've been do we've been innovating for a very long time, and then yeah, people eventually start to see what we do. They copy some of the stuff that we that we've done. Yeah. Even for HD base T, we've created a technology where you can use a PoE switch to power the local HD base T and the foreign HD base T with no power supplies. Oh, wow. So it's a reversible PoE. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the thing, like you took, you spoke about USB, right, mm -hmm. being that you've got a bi-directional solution. Yeah. Um, you know, even most companies, they, they, go, they have a transmitter and a receiver, and then you've got someone like Extron that call them the other way around, you know, like, so it becomes very confusing for people. Yeah. It's like, why can't you just give me a box that I can just send either way? Like, yeah. it, it doesn't seem that hard. Um, but, and also, I was, I was talking to Michael on the stand uh, earlier, and I was saying that as a consultant, What's been happening is that with an AV over IP solution in general, and then adding on top, you have this transceiver, uh, these transceiver boxes available. The design element really is ultimately removed, right? Like everything's sitting on the network. Like what are we really designing? There's no, real, there's no smoke and mirrors anymore um, that used to exist with even with HD base T, right? Like you need to choose the right products now. You've got one box that, that does transmit or receive or transceive, right? Yep. And it sits on the network. Okay. Uh, what? what yeah, it does the scaling and it does the windowing and it does the video from, wall and it does the seamless switching and it does everything. From a design point of view, you know what I mean? That, that design element has been removed or that area of expertise has actually been removed. In That's just the reality of the, the way the industry has gone. But it's great for the integrator on the, on the flip side of that and the client. But it's yeah. great for the integrator we're only rolling the truck with one with one skew effectively yeah. and, and you know whichever way you go that's going to fix the problem you're only going to carry that less cash needed the hardest part with av over ip is really not the boxes it's the network switch configuration yeah exactly so yeah. one of the cool things that we did we, we've been partnered with nekia for a while now yeah. and they've been great to work with and one of the things that we did was we took their new m4500 series which is like an aggregator to make bigger uh you know uh switches and switch configurations and we ported our um, IP based team manager into um, their switch. So we're actually running our server off their switch. We don't even need a separate PC. Yeah. We're running it off the switch itself now. And even our IP open architecture control system, we're running it from there as well. So we got actually another world's first talking of not only it's the world's first, you know, uh, IP based T server running on that, but we're also running our React open architecture control engine on a Netgear switch. And we can control an entire facility right through the switch itself, serve up web pages, automate, yeah. do everything you normally do with a control system. Yep. Yeah. Wow. It's impressive. Yeah, it's very powerful, very, very different, we're very just, cool. We're gonna and, see that roll out a few more and be copied. The uh, industry, you think? That one's gonna be a little harder to copy. Yeah. Um, a lot of code went into writing Reacts. Yeah. yeah. But we are starting a nonprofit organization independent of Aurora where other our competitors are going to be able to use the Reacts engine. And just like in HD based T, we, we're creating a separate organization. So one of the things that we're doing to better the, you know, a lot of companies talk a lot of crap. Well, I'm always the person to put up or shut up. Mm. So what did we do? We took our Reax technology. We're creating an independent organization, creating founders, contributors, adopters, mm -hmm. integrators, and even end users are going to be able to be contributors and adopters. And to share macros, IR files, source code, you name it, and whether it's my brand, their brand, their brand, their brand, doesn't matter, all the products will interoperate. So no more, I'm a this house, I'm a this house, I'm a this house, I'm yeah. locked into that brand. Yeah. We, we're gonna break the barriers of, of uh, non-proprietary IP control. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, hey, we have, um, there's a lot of debate in the industry over one gig versus 10 gig. You, you do both. Yeah. yeah you got products that do both. Are we gonna see a product and, and I don't know. And what by the way, it's a silly debate. I don't even no, know why I, there's even a debate on I, that. I, in the I get yeah. that. I, I agree. But are we going to it's see a? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's right. Well, oh yeah. So, I can go into who's doing that marketing, confusing the industry, but we'll yeah. leave that company with the C letter. Yeah, exactly. Off of it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but are we going to see a solution that allows you to flick a switch, right, or tick a box? that allows you to just to go between one gig or 10 gig 
depending on your cabling infrastructure? Or is there, a, a, is there some technical element involved that uh, stops us from doing that? Well, this is where the standards come into play, which mm. right now, uh, I, I, I can't say what HTBC is working on, but I, I know they like to see us, us, what I'm looking for, which is synergizing, yeah. not just the 10 gig, but across the platform, yeah. which I believe the first company that truly does that and opens it up to everybody yeah. will become the standard, yes. ultimately. Yeah. But in, if you're focusing on 10 gig, that's not gonna make you a standard. Yeah. That's gonna get you a temporary foothold in the industry. Yeah. And it solves a problem just, just like other things do. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you need, uh, and I know, like, like you said, you brought up a great thing. Oh, this whole one gig versus 10 gig debate. No, different applications, yeah. different expectations. You wanna record your video, you're not gonna use 10 gig, too much bandwidth. One gig you're not gonna use either for that matter. You're gonna use an H.265 or a 264. Mm. You're gonna go halfway around the world, you're not going to slam it with that. You're sure. going to have to use a, an H.264. Yeah. yeah, highly compressed, but you don't have another choice. Mm. One gig, lower cost, these some you know implementations. Even if 10 gig comes down, one gig still has its place. Yes. Mm. As far as uh, it's always going to be lower because it's just the way the things shift. When 10 gig switches come down in price, one gigs will come down, come down even yeah. more. And just you know, just the architecture, the chips, and just the nature of it, it's always going to be less money. It just means that whatever the price of the one gig now is just going to shift a little bit lower. So it's going to have a difference in price and capability yeah. between them. But I do think 10 gigs is going to get to a, a point where it's going to be reasonable compared to where the current one gigs are, where eventually 10 gig will be at the one gig pricing at some point. And then people will decide, is it really worth going that much lower for the one gig or just settle for the 10 gig? So I do believe in the long run that will happen. But at the end of the day, do you need to put a 10 gig system in a bar? No, you don't. One gig, even yeah. with a frame and a half of latency, yeah. I can put the original next to it, and it's so hard to tell. And who yeah. puts the original next to the yeah. content? Yeah. Even if the color changes a hair, yeah, no one's gonna it's really relative. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I can put two different brand TVs next yeah. to each other, they're, they're and the colors are going to change. Yeah. Yeah. So I know people throw up those test patterns, and oh my God, look at the test pattern, and ours, here's the original. But, but the typical end really user doesn't see that anyway, right? No. Like uh, people in the industry, like we can look at it and put, like you say, you do a comparison side by no. side, and you go, Oh yeah, I can. That one's this, and that one's that. But the general, the person out there, the consumer, they don't know the difference. And, and this is where the ten gig, one gig debate gets really silly. And I, I know we talked talk about the company who was, you know, trying to make it. Oh yeah, the ten gigs as good as the the one gigs as good as a ten gig. Here's why it's a silly concept. Okay, first off, if I do put in certain test patterns, I will make the one gig fail. Period. Yeah. Okay? Cool. The 10 gig doesn't, it's a losses compression. Yeah. When you have a 20 to 1 compression at 4K6444, something's gotta go. Yeah. Period. And yeah, you could build up static images and make it look pretty when it's static, but once you put a little bit of motion, those compression engines gotta move. But that's only part of it, okay? You do have a latency there still. You can't call it zero latency yeah. because your other product <laughs> had a scaler in it that gave it latency, <laughs> and because it has no additional latency than its yeah. prior product, yeah. makes it no latency. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no. No latency is no latency. Yeah, yeah. I don't care what the hell yeah, you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? So you could twist yeah. it around any way you want. Yeah. Zero latency is zero latency. Yes. Yeah. Um, so they're playing with words in a very obscure way yeah. that I don't it's even... It's called marketing. Yeah, yeah. very, yeah. very <laughs> on the edge marketing yeah. with that one. But now take apart the stuff that is not being talked about. Okay, how do you deliver 480 megabits of USB when you have 900 megabits being used for the one gig transmission, mm. can't yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. So what does that mean about your USB 2.0 port on your one gig? Mm. It's not doing 480 megabits per second. Yeah. And if you're talking by direction, yeah. not even getting 240 megabits per second, okay? Yeah. So the reality of it is, you're not getting the bandwidth that you're thinking you're getting for USB 2.0 on a one gig system. On a 10 gig, you're getting the full 480 megabit per second. Yeah. Now, let's talk about one gig. Well, you're using the one gig. You need a second one gig there, guess what? Yeah. You're pulling another cable. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay? Exactly. Now, try to do windowing. Have you ever seen any one gig systems do windowing yeah. without using a separate processor, which yeah. costs a lot of money? Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. 10 gig can do that. Yeah. Why? Because you could pre-size it before you send it as yeah. a secondary tunnel yeah. to the aggregator, which will put it together. Yeah and put all the windows. So, so, so on that, how many concurrent streams can you send? Huh? How many concurrent streams can you send? 32. 
32 concurrent streams. Yeah. Yeah. You might have to play with the uh, the frame rates and yeah. the size of the, the screen because you're limited to a 10 gig, you know, bandwidth. Mm. But it can do it. One gig can't do that. Yeah. So what they don't talk about is the baseline functionality mm -hmm. and feature. So when you implement a 10 gig switch, and let's say you have 100 of them, right? You just added, when you, for every SDV product you put down, you just added 100 one gig ports to it. You just got a 100 port one gig switch for yeah. free. Yeah. yeah. Really. And then with one cable, you're delivering one gig, you're delivering USB, you're delivering the full perfect quality of video. Now take the same thing in one gig. Can't do that. You can't do the other one. At least your one cable left with an imperfect signal. Yeah. Now, what's imperfect once again? It's more than adequate for the typical usage, but esports, you can't have a frame of latency. I don't yeah. care what you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're barking over three milliseconds yeah, yeah, yeah. from an LCD screen. Yeah. You think they're gonna want, you know, over you know, 16.6 milliseconds or higher? What is it, 16.66667? Maybe off that one six, yeah. but you get the idea. Yeah. So, for those of you who try to get too accurate, <laughs> so you always get somebody out there that says, "No, it's not 6.6," .6, and why didn't he round it up anyway? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, yeah. just gotta gotta put those in place just in case they're trying to get super accurate. Yeah. So, I'm allowed to be a little bit loose on my yeah. spec, but um, but the point is, no, you, you can't have that type of esports. Medical, you're moving a hand around. Yeah. Timing matters, yeah. you yeah. know. Uh, you're doing broadcast, timing matters, especially your live performance. That 16 milliseconds, especially if you get into the two frame range, you know what happens. You get into over 20, you know, 25, 32 milliseconds, you sound like that slight bathroom effect. Yes. Like you know, like John Lennon when he was recording in the bathrooms yeah. for some of his songs. Yeah. That's what it does, it adds that reverberation. Yeah. So you gotta be real careful with that. You can't be selling products that claim something yeah. that don't do that. So that's where I like these 10 gigs, is the fact that they're doing exactly what they say. Yeah. So 100 microseconds is not gonna make or break anything in those type of applications, and you're delivering the full pipeline. So there's a lot more to it than just simply the quality of the signal. It's the other benefit of the application that you're getting out of it, and how much is it gonna cost you to run another cable, or to add another processor to do the windowing. When you're done looking at the application, you might find that the one gig ends up costing you more than the 10 yeah. gig. So that's just a fact. Yeah. All right, we could stay and talk here all day. We could. Oh, trust could. me, people who know yeah. me know <laughs> I could talk all day, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It's been, uh, yeah, no, it's look, it's been, been fantastic. I yeah. uh, really appreciate you coming on the show, oh, coming yeah. on the Tech it's Effect, up. and I've, I've certainly learned a lot, so. I, yeah, I'm now going to go out and restudy the video. What did you say there? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's been fantastic. Great. Really appreciate Thanks. your time, Paul. Thank you for having me. So, yeah. my first time on the show, and I'm Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it's a new thing. We're doing That's this it. whole interview thing. Easy. Thanks, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate Thank your you. time. And uh, stay tuned for more episodes from the Tech Effect at ISC 2020. Cheers.